So the other day I was on court doing some work with one of my students, Jared Carter, young professional that's uh, really starting to climb the ranks and, and yeah, a lot of potential excitement here. So I want to just talk about what we're doing. And actually, if I just point that out, look at the quality of that length there, getting hitting just behind the service box, beautiful length there that it's going to make the back wall nice and tight, but really glues, you know, so that was one part of what we're doing is really trying to use those floorboards, can't even get that ball off. But one of the key things is how he's standing on the tee. This is one of the things we worked on. Where is it that ready position? If I'm honest with being a bit fussy, the top of that racket might be a little bit too high. I know that sounds a bit weird because you don't want to be too committed too high here in case someone whips across court and you won't be able to get the racket around in time. But we, did, we did made a lot of corrections because in simple terms, his racket face was looking at the ceiling, the blade of the racket, that side of his racket wasn't quite in the right point and it was quite a passive position. So we were looking at really getting him, <clears throat> sorry, excuse me, getting him to be really hunting that ball. Again, I can't get it off that side wall because it was really tight. So let me go through a few bits and we'll talk about it as we go. There's lots of little bits about his movement that I like. Lots of good examples. Love that real deliberate follow through. As he's hitting, he's really bit deliberate with how straight that follow through is going. Again, if I'm being a little bit picky, it's a little bit behind him. And we've done quite a lot of work for him to try and get him behind the ball a little bit more. Whereas there, I think he's just reaching and you can notice his body weight is just falling back a little bit. It's not quite transferring through the line. And it's a little bit of a secondary movement that he could have got a little bit better. One thing I'm a massive fan of as well, let's just look at his feet. Done a lot of work with this and I've done a lot of videos on this. Steps in with his left foot, has this beautiful drag with the right foot, getting into this tall, narrow position as I'm about to hit. Like, look at that. That, that the timing of the split step is phenomenal. So he's there, he's in that optimal position as I'm hitting. And what's nice is he knows where this ball's going, but the key is he's actually practicing his split step as if it could be at any time in any direction. You notice that the right foot, or sorry, his right foot hits the floor because he's pushing off to the front or to the side. He's actually pushing off for the volley there. And that's a really good thing. This is what we're doing some work on. Notice like once he's done his split step, look what he does with his racket. Look how he's taking it up towards the ball, looking at the ball, hunting it, and very simply just reducing the amount of space between his racket head and the ball. We were trying to reduce his swing at the same time also, but it all stemmed from this position that we work in. I think that's almost the perfect position that we're looking at. The racket just above a 90 degree angle. So I might just use this one as a little example. You know, the racket, you know, somewhere around there, just, just pointing up so it's not flat. It's not fully, you know, like there, because for me, that's a bit stiff and a bit too rigid. That's a beautiful position to split step and go and look and hunt for that volley, taking that racket out to the ball. So it's a very, very good example of it. So we'll have a look at a few more little things, just something to note. I know you can't see the ball. If I zoom out, yes, we can see the ball there. Like, look at that locked arm position, really good reaching, really trying to keep his foot close to the tee. He definitely drags it as he's coming in, but that drag now recoils him. Let's just take a look at that for a second. So there's a lot in this video I'm going to unpack. So it's probably worth watching a couple of times this one. As he goes in, look how he drags. Uh, this is something I talk a lot about, how both feet are pretty much almost underneath the hips. That's brilliant because from there, he can explode backwards really well. I see so many people leave that back foot trailing out there and it's such a hard movement to recoil from there. So that's a good example of the recoil. Contact point, beautiful. Look at that reach. Really looking for like that arms nice and straight, extending out. We have done some work on this where he does tend to leave his head a little bit backwards, a little bit behind the ball. And that's something that we're trying to maybe have a look at where his eyes and his eye level should be a little bit more looking at the ball there. Look, I, I, not often I, I comment on that with people because often it's the other way around where they're looking too far open, whereas he's slightly opposite in that sense. Again, really good, lovely follow through. Look at that. I talk a lot about that, the blade of the racket pointing. I can't draw through the screen, but if I could draw through the screen, I'll draw through it, pointing to where he wants that ball to hit. Compact, putting a limiter on it, which I think is really good. Okay, there's that racket position, nice. And he takes it up there, possibly a little bit of an exaggeration, but that's fine. We were actually working on this. So he's just basically exaggerating bits of this as he's trying to improve it. Nice movement into the corner, right foot, left foot combo has to do a little hop readjust, which is okay, not ideal. Let's just look at that. Perfect. Look at that body position. Lovely base, enough bend in the knee. If I'm honest, maybe a few more degrees lower would be ideal because if I'm just looking at that racket head, it's just possibly pointing too far downwards whereas he could squat a little bit more. Nice release, releasing with one full fluid motion. I do a lot of work on this as well. Take this one with a pinch of salt if you're an amateur. But notice how his left foot leaves. There he makes contact with the ball there, 
And I like to talk about tethering these two areas together like that. So watch how it's almost like a puppet with a string. As his racket goes past his foot, the foot engages and he comes out. He's not delaying. He's not spending any extra time in the shot. He's working at getting out of the shot because at this level, these players need to get out of that ball really quick. One thing I'd comment on, which I probably didn't notice in the lesson, from this position, I would like to see his back foot swing around a bit more. If I, again, if I'm being really fussy, I think he's a bit too open there with the hips and he might have to just steer the ball. If he could stay more side on there, like that's the side on position. And now even if this lead foot was coming out, the back foot should come out behind in order to keep his hips and his chest as side on as possible. And that takes away any thought about steering the ball down the line. He, he can just release at that point, but he does really well with this. So let's see where it bounces. Yep, pretty decent length. A little bit short, but I chopped in the drop there. Let's have a look at what I've spoken about already. Look at that optimal T position. Dragging the back foot, really narrow base, really tall. Look at that. You can go in any direction. And look, I know he knows he's probably, I'm playing a drop. The cue is in what I'm doing. Look at my, you know, arm and body position and racket. It's all relatively defensive, neutral. For me, that's showing I'm playing the drop. So you can already see he's preempting that foot's going down to push him backwards or a force backwards in order to push him forwards into that front of the court. So loads of great technical stuff he does while well. he's actually a really good technician, quite nuanced in the things we're working on. But I think these things will take him through to that slightly high level. He goes and let's just zoom out a sec. How's he getting his racket? Not bad. I'd probably like to see a little bit more threat and options there. Possibly goes into a semi-neutral position a bit early, but okay, he plays a lot. I thought he was going to play a drop, but that was good. Let's have a look a bit more. Again, lifting that racket up, hopefully showing threat and options. I want to see if there's a volley one coming in. Nice length there. There's that volley. Let's have a look at what he's doing. So there he's hunting. He's in that neutral position. Let's zoom into the key aspects again. I can't emphasize enough how good that is. If any of you watching want to get the split step right, this is as close as I think you'll get to a really good split step. Even on that volley, it's actually really hard to split step on the volley, but he does well. Notice how his left foot always lands slightly before his right foot. Not always the left foot, but one foot always has to land before the other foot in order to give him a bit of downward force to be able to push off in that direction. Let's see what he does with his racket. Yep, nice. Again, if I'm being a little bit fussy, he maybe takes it towards the glass a little bit too much. Possibly he could take it even more, even more towards that ball would be ideal and optimal. Let's have a look here. And that's a bit of a dipping volley, so quite an awkward run. He de de deals with it well, gets it down the line, puts it in okay position. So yeah, I'm hoping you're, you're seeing some good stuff here. Look at this. Love that. Love that. Like, look at, you know, the side of the racket. I'm seeing the blade there. Really beautiful position. He's got that high-ish elbow position and it's locked out. Not locked out. It's got a nice bend in that elbow. He, his wrist is also slightly cocked. Not too big. A lot of threats. A lot of options from here. And look at how he sinks really well. Look at that. There we go. That's the one I'm looking for. There's those knees I'm looking for. Nicely squatted. But notice it's all in one motion. Look at that. There we go. And he's taken it at the optimal point there. It, it's just falling, not necessarily in front of him, but he's just having to reach that a little bit, which I really like, which means the transfer of body weights could be good. And actually he doesn't do it as well there. He kind of locks a little bit because I'm just looking at that left foot and I'd like to see that left foot come out a little bit more. And you can actually see in his face, he kind of, kind of <laughs> grimaces that he pulled it a little bit. So that's quite interesting that he didn't quite get that right. I wonder if it's the mechanics. There's something in there that I, if I could see it from the other angle, I might be able to identify it. I can't quite see it from there. But he does quite a lot of a spin, doesn't he? If you notice that foot, kind of spins out that way, which is not ideal. And then everything is now looking towards the front wall. And that's probably a good snapshot picture that at that point, it's too open, isn't it? Like the rackets come across his body. It's all a little bit timid. He probably possibly hasn't kept his head down enough. And again, yeah, maybe a tiny bad habit of that back foot coming in front rather than that back foot swinging behind. I'd like to see something there for him to improve on. And he has got to rush to the tee, but I like that he's urgent. He's urgent because he wants to get into that optimal position for the split step. There it is, a slightly exaggerated one. That foot above the floor is possibly a little bit too much, but he does well, nice and easy. He knows, I think it's going in for the drop shot. He executes the shot. Let's have a look at a few other things. Nice fading length there, by the way. I really like where that length hit from the front of the court. That's actually a really good place to hit. Me standing there looks easy, right? If I'm on the tee, I'm chasing that ball into the corner. I'm continually chasing it and I ain't getting that back. That's a great example of that fading length. Again, maybe a foot further back, but actually if you think about that service box, the back of the service box, I don't think you want to be bouncing it behind the service box when you're looking for that fading attacking length.
So hopefully a few of these things are resonating. Again, he was a little bit more neutral there. That elbow position was a little bit lower, but because my shot was a bit deeper, he had to lift it. And again, there we go. You can possibly see, and I'm glad I'm doing this because I can actually see it. I wasn't able to see this during the lesson that there's a lot of openness there. He's opening too much. I want that left foot, that foot coming out, but I don't want the, the trade-off of him opening up too much and then having to feel like he steers the ball. And yeah, you can sense the frustration there on those few little things. So he's looking for the volley. Good. Because again, the main part of this lesson was actually this. It was actually that racket head position. So we were really looking at that. And we did, we looked to the video quite a lot after that. Again, not too bad. Falling backwards, maybe slightly. Is there even more simplicity going up there? Someone like Nick Mackey was the master at this. He was able to take his racket up and forward towards the ball in a phenomenal position all the time. But that's pretty good. We'll take that. And I like that he just chips it down the line, just varies the pace, just changes it up, takes this thing out of it. Good. Again, if he, and for me, the one thing could, could Jared, could he lift his elbow a bit more? Let me get that on again. Could he lift his elbow a bit more and actually get into that slightly hooded position a little bit earlier just to show more threats and options? I think for me, that for me feels a little bit passive. There could be more of this engaged elbow with a forearm. It get hard for me to kind of show you, but the forearm and the bicep is possibly inverted and looking further down towards the ground. That for me would be quite an interesting way to, to get him to hit there because that's okay, but I definitely feel that's a little bit passive. It's like, hey, you know what? I'm just going to be pushing the ball and find maybe my shot's okay enough that he just has to push it. And, you know, if he'd made that decision early, fine. But I do like that idea of having threats and options within the shot. So we'll just watch a couple more to finish up with this video. Again, maybe a bit of a lucky shot for me there, forced him into the front. Let's go through this next little bit. Yeah, same, a little bit passive compared to that other one I showed you before where he really got engaged. I don't know if I do one in a bit where, not quite, no. There's other videos of me hitting that deep four. And again, maybe there's just a little inclination there. You can just see it, I'm, you know, it's kind of hard and maybe not a good example, but the elbow's up there, it's loaded. The racket's just slightly tilting over on my position there. The, the racket face is in that nice threatening position. Maybe it's something I'd like to see Jared do a little bit more, getting into that position so you can then hit. I always have to move and get out the way, so I'm not going to hang around there. That's a little bit better. Again, some very good things he does well, just for repeating the main points. That, that foot position placement, beautiful. It goes left foot, right foot combo, and those feet are facing roughly at about 45 degrees, setting him up. Is he going to sink well? Yep, sinks well. Again, is it in the right position? Yeah, it looks like he releases that better. Again, I'm going to repeat that. Super open, isn't it? Look how there's an opening going on there, which possibly is steering the ball out to the middle. And he's, you know, his, his whole body is now open looking at the front wall. Whereas I think when I watch the top, top players, they are still slightly in touch with that side wall as they're coming out the corner. Okay, so everyone, I'm hoping that really helps and good to see someone of this level doing some of these drills. I'll try to get a few more of these and put them on. If you do like this, please do share and subscribe and talk about it. Leave some comments. What would you like to see next within the channel? And if you notice that link in the description below, click it for your free swing audit. It's there for you guys and girls. Really happy to help out as much as I can. Take care for now. Bye.